And welcome to Saturday Night Crafty. My name is Sasha Reed, and tonight I've got a fun technique with you uh, using embossing folders. Now, I start out my video using a bunch of 3D embossing folders, but I do use a non 3D embossing folder as well, and it does work really well. So, these are my supplies here that I'm using today on the screen, plus a non 3D embossing folder towards the end. Now, I kind of went down a little rabbit hole. I got started doing a technique I wanted to try and have a play with, and then evolved into something slightly different and I can't wait to share it all with you. So starting my process, I wanted to use this 3D embossing folder, which I bought ages ago and have never used. It's kind of like a gears and cogs embossing folder and it is really quite cool. It looks very, very dimensional. I do spritz the back of it before I use it just to give it more flexibility in my embossing folder in my big shop. I'm also using a mixed media mat from scrapbook.com. It just helps to keep my desk clean. Now the other core supply for tonight is using a white pigment ink pad. This is so key in my technique tonight. It's going to really make the colors pop off your card. We're essentially going to add this white ink to our cardstock on all the raised areas and it will add the exact pop that we need for our card making project tonight. Now I started out by dragging my ink pad across my cardstock without looking at my ink pad while I was doing it and then I realized oh my goodness my white ink pad is now a bit black. I tried wiping it off on a piece of scrap paper and it didn't really come off that much and it's fine because this ink pad needs replacing. I've had it for about six years and it is really crusty on the top now so it does need to go and I do need a new one. But if you've got a brush like this, a nice flat brush, it works really, really well. I'm going to do two here just to show you. So that's the first one where I rubbed on the ink pad and now this one I'm dusting over quite lightly with the heavy ink on my brush and you can see it really makes those elements pop but the background is still quite black so the bits that are not as raised are still quite black and so having a brush like this is really nice it's just a makeup brush mine's from AliExpress I bought for like two pounds about five years ago they're really cheap and easy to find just have a Google search they're not difficult to to find in the market but I would avoid buying them from a craft store because they are marked up really really high and they are a cheap brush now I'm going to use pigment inks. I'll share with you towards the end what it looks like when I've used an oxide ink, but the pigment ink just seems to really stick on top of my white pigment ink so much better. I wanted to kind of get a rusty sort of look to my card. I want it to be a bit grungy, a bit gear and cogs looking. So I'm starting out with an orange and I'm kind of brushing that orange over with just an average sponge that I've cut into a chunk. And then I'm taking a brown and going over top of that. So this is great because now you can kind of add in two different colors and sort of give it a bit more dimension and texture on top of that embossing powder that you are embossing folder that you've already got. Now one of the like loveliest bits is adding a bit of metallic on the top. So I've got these scrapbook.com metallic ink pads. They are probably the best ones I've ever used. They go on really nice. They maintain their sheen. Um, they're not overly expensive. They're a really good one on the market. I'm really happy with these. I've had a few different pigment and metallic inks, and this one's by far the best. I've got three of them now. I don't have the silver, but I plan to get it. And all I'm going to do is use my finger. And I'm going to wipe my finger off in between each go because I've learned my lesson. You don't want to cross-contaminate. And when you're spreading the pigment ink onto pigment ink that's on top of pigment ink, it does pick up the pigment ink underneath. So just give your finger a little wipe as you're going between each layer. And it will help keep your ink, pad, ink pad nice and clean. So I am wiping my finger off in between re-inking my finger each time and I just found I got way more control if I used my finger than if I used like a sponge or a dauber. I just felt like I could really dust those edges really nicely and I didn't get too much of a mucky mess. So a really quick and easy way to apply that metallic ink. Now if you've got metallic paint, um, that would probably work as well. You just put a very light amount on your finger and just dust over it. So here you can see that beautiful shine. And this is what I was going for. This is what I wanted to do tonight, but I went down a rabbit hole and I take you to a different place. <laughs> so this I'm happy with. I love how it looks. I love that dimension and character. Now, if you're enjoying tonight, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And double check, if you are subscribed, check that you've got that bell notification hooked up because I've had a lot of people saying, I haven't seen you for months. And then all of a sudden they find this video of me and realize they've missed a few months worth of videos. So make sure you hit the bell notification and check that it is on. Now here's my next 3D embossing folder. This is the trees and I'm using the brush. I'm going to stick with the brush for the rest of the video because I felt like it went on really nice and obviously I'm not going to drag my ink pad over any more cardstock and pick up any more colors. Now I wanted, <laughs> I really wanted to use pink 
Don't ask me why. It doesn't really go with trees, but I felt like it looked cool and it kind of popped off the card a bit more. So I went with pink and green. And then for this one, I wanted to make it look a bit snowy. So I went with the sort of pearlescent white, I guess. Um, and I used that one and dusted that over with my finger and got this beautiful shine. Kind of looks a bit like snow. So I did a few of these ones and they are going to be my Christmas cards. Um, I'm starting in Christmas cards. I know it was supposed to be Christmas in July. So I'm a bit late by doing it in August. But these ones are going to be Christmas cards. And I have ordered some Christmas dies from scrapbook.com. So hopefully they'll come in time to make some Christmas cards. But that was kind of my thought behind this one. Now again, I'm adding on some of the white ink. And this time I thought I'd share with you if you wanted to rub a lot firmer and go a bit more crazy with your white ink and really cover up that background and cover up your colored card stock. Now this is ideal for someone who's in a rush who really needs to get a card done quite quickly and you don't want to have to think about it. This works perfect. You're just dragging the ink over, really slap dashing it on and it still looks great. You still get a great effect from it and you save a lot more time. And again, I'll take my finger and do the next bit in with my finger because that one I don't really want to drag all over because again, it would just, it won't highlight your trees. It will just make a mess. So here's the one I just quickly dragged over and here's the one I spent a bit more time on and kind of went over with a sponge. So your choice, whatever you feel like you like the look of more or whatever you've got the time for more. Now here's where I went down the rabbit hole. I was thinking I love the look of changing the color of my cardstock with my dark cardstock showing through. So instead of using my brush, I used my finger because I felt like this gave me more control and I could do a lot more with it, apply a lot heavier of an ink without it going through. Now I do two layers on each of my card. I feel like the layers make a difference and I do wait in between each one to let them dry a bit or use a heat tool to add that second layer on to get it to kind of pop a bit more. Now this is a great technique if you're using a more detailed um, embossing folder, so one like this with lots of leaves. There isn't much sort of colored blank space, but I also do use a hexagon um, embossing folder and it does look just as good. So on the left it was one layer, on the right it was two layers, and now I'm going to add the color on top and just watch how cool it looks. So we've got our natural cardstock color, the dark color on the bottom. We've applied the white which has lightened the cardstock, and now we can apply the color on the top, and now we look like we've got two totally different colored cardstocks in one. It looks like a pattern paper, a really cool pattern paper. So I really love this technique. I love altering the color of the cardstock and giving us more um, colors to work with, and you can do such different car colors as well. So on the right, I did the pink, and on the left, I did the teal. And you can still tell that it's teal and pink, which is really fun. Now here's my hexagon uh, embossing folder. This is not a 3D embossing folder. This is one that I got out of a magazine for free. And I did the same. I used my finger and I dusted over the top of this one on the left. And the one on the right, I kind of applied a heavier ink and did the opposite side. So these are just the two sides of the embossing folder when you run it through your machine. And I'm going to do them in yellow and kind of do like be happy cards is what I was thinking. So you can see how bold those colors get on top of that white. Now here's where I did the oxide ink versus the Versamark ink. So the top is the Versa, uh, Versafine ink, sorry. And on the bottom is the Distress Oxide. So it's just a bit more vibrant and a bit more pigmented uh, with the pigment ink. So I found I liked that color more. I felt like I got a lot more bold of an effect. So again, to remind you that dark card stock was a dark purple. I've made it blue and purple and pink and purple. You can obviously have so much fun. I obviously did the black and yellow underneath. So this is a great way to just make a whole bunch of backgrounds with whatever inks you've got, whatever colors you've got, um, as long as you've got a white ink pad. So it works really nicely. I finished off three of the cards for you today, ran out of time, and also wanted to make those tree ones into Christmas cards, so I kind of stopped there. Um, but this one here, I used these word dies from scrapbook.com and used the word celebrate, and then that way it can be for a birthday, an anniversary, whatever I feel like. My next one I made into a thank you card using some black glitter card stock and a thank you die from Lawn Fawn. Um, I will do my best to link everything I used in the description box below for you, but some of these things may be sold out and they may not be available anymore. And my first original card base that I created with you, I turned into a masculine card that could either be a thank you or a birthday, added a bit more of that 
shiny ink onto the top of my U and onto the Just 4. And for those ones, I just used an old Altenew stamp set and then my U from my Trinity Stamps Thank You die set. And I paired those two together to create that card. Now these ones I have backed, I've lined them up with some silver underneath, some silver glitter cardstock. And they are ready for when I get my Merry Christmas dies um, in and I can finish those off. And then these are my sort of Be Happy themed cards that I will add on probably some die cuts or I might use my Cricut and create some words and stick those on the top of those. Now hopefully I'll finish these all off and I'll put them on my Instagram for you to check out. So in my description box is my Instagram link as well as my Facebook group if you want to join and share any of your makes with me. There's also a buy me a coffee link down there if you want to sponsor this channel in any other kind of way and buy me a coffee. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic weekend ahead and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Bye.